Hello data friends. Data ingestion is crucial in analytics. Microsoft Fabrics Data Factory offers data flows for visually creating multi-step data ingestion and transformation using Power Query Online. In Microsoft Fabric, Dataflows Gen 2 connects to various data sources and perform transformations in Power Query Online. They can then be used in data pipelines to ingest data into a lakehouse or other analytical store or to define a dataset for a Power BI report. This lab is designed to introduce the different elements of Dataflows Gen 2 and not create a complex solutions that might exist in an enterprise. So, uh, as of uh, beginning of each lab, we are going to create new lake house. So let me do that very quickly. So in order to do that, I'm going to select Synapse Data Engineering and create new lake house. Uh, it uh, will be uh, lab 05. So let me create this and wait a few seconds. Now that we have a lake house, we need to ingest some data into it. One way to do this is to define a data flow that encapsulates an extract, transform and load ETL process. Now on the home page of my workspace, which is this one, MS Learn Fabric, let's create a um, new uh, data flow. So I can click here, click the new button and then select data flow gen 2 to create new data flow gen 2. So let's do that. Now we are going to uh, import some data, import data from a CSV or text file. My source data this time will come not from my uh, local machine and uh, I will not upload any file to uh, one lake, but I'm going to read data directly from a URL, this time from uh, GitHub. So let me copy paste the URL um, this is the whole URL. Of course, you will find um, this uh, the whole URL um, in the lab description. So check the description uh, below of this video. Uh, so th that's it. What we need to do here, we are creating. We'll create new connection here. So that's the that's the option we need to uh, left here. Uh, we don't have any data gateway. We don't need any authentication. So we are leaving this anonymous in here. And then we are going to click uh, next button. Connecting to the source uh, is happening right now to check our data. And this is preview of uh, our file, preview of our data. So now I'm going to click next and actually create button. Uh, before you do that, you can double check if the, all the data looks correct and if you need to change something here to, for example, define or configure different um, delimiter for columns or maybe you encoding uh, for the file is different than the default UTF-8. So you can change it uh, on uh, this uh, on this moment. Yeah, and uh, perfectly fine because you see all the data um, uh, read it by the process and you can check visually if the data looks correct at this stage. Of course, you can change it later. That's not a problem, but this is the best moment to do that. Yeah, so let's uh, click uh, the create button right now and create the connection. So after that, we have three steps already created in our power query, uh, which represent our data flow, Gen2. So first step is the source. If we click in here on the uh, right hand side uh, menu, we'll see those three steps. And uh, if we click on the particular step, you will see the data uh, after uh, applying this specific step. So the first step is source. It's reading CSV data. The second step is promoted uh, headers. So as you can see the differences in the first step, we don't have headers. Actually, the headers are in line one. Then the second step is to promote this first line of the text file as a headers. 
so we don't have to guess what is the name of the columns. And then the third one would be apply appropriate uh, types uh, for columns uh, because the process were able to read the file and guess the data types based on data um, uh, read from the from the file. So it's just guessing based on first top 200 records. We can change it if that doesn't look correct. Yeah, but in most of the cases, this should be fine. OK, we have our default data, default columns from this file. We have appropriate data types for those columns. Let's add now new step to our um, data flow and add new calculated column. To do that, we are going to click the Add Column menu here on the top and then we choose a Custom Column. Okay, So we are creating a custom column right now. Uh, so let's name it month and O, like number, um, and choose data type as a whole number because it will be whole number. Okay, and the formula will be uh, like this: date dot month. And here we need to provide the argument. In this case, it will be order date because the order date is one of the column. Uh, we can put and write this um, column name here, or we can just click and insert column from uh, this panel here. That's great. This is our first um, custom column. We can click OK now, and the column will be added. And actually, you see that the new step also has been added um, in the list of the steps. So this is the way how we are creating a kind of code in the low code approach, adding step by step, we are transforming data uh, in that kind of uh, natural way that we can see what happens, what we are adding, what changing, and exactly in the same way, in the exactly in the same order, computer doing those transformations for us. As I mentioned earlier, you, you can always uh, move back and see what the data looked like at the step or few steps before. Yeah? So you can see what happens uh, before and uh, what is going and how the, the whole table looks like after the last step uh, applied. Now let's say we have our data prepared. Uh, we of course don't want to throw it away. We want to save the result of our work, the result of our transformations somewhere. So at this stage, we should add the destination, uh, the destination where we want to save those data, where we want to save this table. So let's let's do it now. So we are clicking uh, Home menu here on the top, and then we can choose this Add Data Destination. So we can choose what type of our destination would be. Uh, in my case, uh, let's uh, select the lake house because we just created at the beginning of this uh, lesson, we created new lake house called lab05. So let's actually send the data to this lake house. So connection, we're going to create new connection. Uh, I am um, I'm already signed in to uh, using my uh, organizational account, um, so that's uh, that's that's great. Um, and I need to just click uh, next button. Now I should choose uh, the target um, workspace. In this case, is this one and the lake house I created. And of course, target table name. Uh, in my case, uh, let's leave this uh, as a orders because that would that was uh, the original um, file name uh, from uh, the the URL from the from the Git. Now again, clicking uh, button next, and uh, now Fabric is validating data destination target and in a few seconds this process should be confirmed and now we can 
choose uh, this. So we see all the source uh, data types and the destination because our destination doesn't exist yet and we have used automatic session settings here. So we can decide to, to switch it off and then uh, we have more options here. So first of all, uh, we can decide what kind of update method we are going to use. So to replace data in place, so every single time when we run this, it will replace the target table, uh, removing all the data in there. Or we can every single time we can add those uh, new records to the target table. So it's up to up to us what we want to, to do. OK, let's use the append uh, in this case. And now we can uh, save these settings. As you can see now, uh, in the uh, right bottom corner, we have our data destination configured. We can uh, see what is the basic information about this destination. And uh, also we can configure this or reconfigure this again to checking uh, what's, uh, what's there. So we can change the destination, uh, we can change the table name and etc. if needed. Yeah. So let's double check what we've had, what we've got here. Um, so exactly the same uh, steps. Uh, again, in this page, as I mentioned, we can change the source type uh, if we really need, or we can um, change it in the Power Query. Actually, the changing data types in the Power Query is the most recommended uh, uh, way to do that. In addition to all the steps that we can see on the right hand side, all the applied steps, we can see the diagram view of all the steps and the transformation we are doing. Let's have a look on this. Uh, when we click on the view menu, we can click on this diagram button here and see this diagram, what is uh, happening, what is going on. So you see all the steps that are happening on our transformations uh, and also at the end we see the lake house as a destination. The same button is uh, visible and available on the uh, right bottom corner in here, next to the publish button. So now because our data flow uh, is ready, let's publish it. To do that, I'm going to click this publish button in here. And now my data flow gen2 is being published. Yeah, we need to wait a few or several seconds until this has been done. You can include a data flow as an activity in a pipeline. Pipelines are used to orchestrate data ingestion and processing activities, enabling you to combine data flows with other kinds of operation in a single scheduled process. Pipelines can be created in a few different ex experiences, including data factory experience. Now from our uh, fabric enabled workspace, uh, let's make sure that we are still in the data engineering, which is this one, this persona or this uh, module mm, on the left uh, bottom corner. So we are here and now we can create new uh, pipeline, new data pipeline. So let's click, click this button, uh, data pipeline, new object and we are going to uh, create new pipeline, naming it maybe to do, 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 load data. Load data, maybe lap 05 at the beginning and let's create new pipeline. In this pipeline, we are going to add one activity now to execute our data flow that we just created. So now we are going to uh, add new activity. The activity is visible on the top. As you can see, data flow. So I'm going to click it. And now uh, we can configure which data flow we are going to execute on this stage, in this step. So uh, we're going to go to settings and our activity is in this workspace. This is default workspace that we are working right now. And I have this data flow. Now we are going to save this pipeline. And let's click the run, which will run the whole pipeline 
uh, which includes only one uh, activity, which is data flow, and which this activity will run our data flow that we created and do all the transformation. And at the end, the last step is to save the data in our lake house. So let's wait several seconds until this uh, will be done. As you can see, our pipeline has uh, completed, has been completed. Uh, finish it works including data flow and uh, it took uh, about one minute so let's go to our lake house we should be able to see the data uh, we don't have anything right now here because we need to refresh this list of the tables and now we have an identify object which means probably something didn't refresh correctly uh, this object is not appropriately identified yet by the engine. So let me click refresh again. This should change. Yes, as you can see, this change already. Now the object is appropriately identified as a Delta parquet table. Uh, and now we can see the data in it. Yeah, we can uh, click on the table and see the data that this object contains. And this is our data, as you can see all the columns with appropriate data types and also with our new calculated uh, custom column, which is called month and O, month number. So the last thing I would like to show you uh, is something with the data flow. So let's go and find our data flow again. Uh, let's go maybe here. I can click here, edit this data flow, or I can open the data flow in here. So I'm again in my, my data flow. You remember all the steps. You remember this diagram here. My steps represented, uh, uh, representing uh, all the transformation and target are here. Mm, but also I can click advanced editor then you will see the M language which uh, is the language representing all the power query the whole power query all the steps are written in this M language uh, if you like to sometimes modify this or uh, double check something or, or, or maybe modify or maybe even add new steps. If you are more familiar with this language, this is the place uh, where you can do it. Of course, you need to be very careful about what you and how you are changing this and how you're modifying this. Uh, you need to uh, know this very well. If you are not sure, always uh, make sure that you have copy of this, uh, copy that uh, aside to one uh, to, to OneNote uh, or, or, or something like that to just uh, uh, save the, the, the whole script before you start manipulating um, this, uh, this place and the whole script. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to learn more about Microsoft Fabric, visit Microsoft Fabric community website, which is fantastic knowledge hub for this product. If you have any questions or would like to see any specific problem related to Microsoft Fabric, let me know down below in the comments. In the meantime, have a fantastic day and see you next time. Bye bye.